Hello everybody and welcome back! Well, it seems that you liked my little micro shuttle video, so I thought it would go a little bit in the other direction. This here is the Humpback and it is designed to carry quite a lot of weight into orbits, uh, more or less Buran style. So this is not really a space shuttle in the sense like the Americans built with only the shuttle carrying the main booster. This is a variant where the tank also has some boosters on it, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to make orbit with this thing and you're going to see why later on. But first let's get this thing into orbit, there we go, we've jettisoned the tank, which is designed in such a way to fit into the grooves of the main body of the humpback. I hope you find the name quite fitting since it has such, well, a hump on its back. Okay, moving on. This is the thing in sort of beauty shot. You can see I had to use quite a few control surfaces to keep it stable in flight. And unlike the real shuttle, it also has the capability to fire its engines without an external tank. So we do have some fuel reserves, basically because I didn't want to bother with another propulsion system in orbit. Now it's time to circularize. I'm trying to use my RCS to lift the periapse while gliding through the really, really upper part of the atmosphere. And once we're around at apoapse, we have now successfully circularized at almost 80,000 meters above sea level. And this is the payload. Eight full ore tanks or in weight terms, 136 tons of cargo. So yeah, others may call the orange tank the gold standard of shuttle delivery. I think I might have topped that a bit. So if you use four ore tanks slapped together, they're about the length of an orange tank, but they're way heavier because ore is extremely dense and apparently able to move through matter. Well, this is interesting from a scientific point of view. Okay, so two cargo bays, a lot of docking ports inside for cargo to be attached, and also up front a smaller cargo bay, not really small, but smaller, with a docking port where you can dock this shuttle to perhaps a space station or another vehicle on it. After a tedious deceleration burn using only the RCS, because I did not have a lot of fuel left to get out of orbit, I hoped for the best and wanted to, well, land this thing properly on the runway. Let's see how that works out. I'm using a mod called Trajectories, which shows me the approximate location where I'm going to land. And I'm pitching quite hard to get more braking effects so I can slow down enough to make it to the runway and not crash into the ocean. But I think I might have overdone it because we're already plummeting to the ground and we're still quite a way away from the runway. But let's head through the clouds and see where we're at actually. Okay, so the space center is back there. And we have no fuel left and no other means to propel ourselves. So yeah, the only thing that we can do right now is glide to the ground and hope that the grass is soft enough for us to not explode. Okay, we're below the cloud, so the visibility is not that good. That's due to the environmental visual enhancement mods. But let's hope that we can land safely down here. And all the ground is coming closer. Let's 
pitch up a bit before we crash. Not yet. Yes. Okay, we're flattening out fine. This thing actually glides very well. And yes, we have touched down safely. Let's deploy those drogue shoots so we can brake efficiently. No air brakes attached to this shuttle. Oh well, it's not really the runway, but at least the space center is visible. So yeah, it's a bit of a walk for the crew, but I hope they don't mind to stretch their legs to get back home. Alright, that's it. This is my humpback double cargo bay 136 tons to orbit space shuttle. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing or liking or even sharing this video. And I'll see you soon with a few other things in the future. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.